Hello, I will briefly introduce the main concepts of the SPS agreement here. So the SPS agreement sets out the basic rules for food safety and animal and plant health. It recognizes member right to take sanitary and phytosanitary measures while ensuring that this right is not misused for protectionist purposes and that SPS measures do not result in unnecessary barriers to international trade. Sanitary and phytosanitary measures can take many forms, such as requiring products to come from a disease-free area, uh, safety inspections or setting uh, of permitted maximum levels of pesticide residues, for example. They apply to domestically produced food or local animal and plant diseases, as well as to products coming from other countries. In the WTO, the SPS Committee is the body which is in charge of the administration of the SPS Agreement. Now, before we go on uh, introducing the main WTO disciplines on SPS measures, uh, let's see how the SPS Agreement applies through a practical example. Let's suppose that Vanin and Tristat are two WTO members. Vanin is a major exporter of apples and Tristat is a major importer of apples. Now, let's suppose that last year Vanin's producers of apples experienced losses which were derived from the spread of a pest that affected apple crops in Vanin. As a result, the Vaninian apple producers started increasing the use of a pesticide for the prevention of another spread of pest in their apple farms. In face of a growing amount of imported apples with high levels of pesticide residue, Tristat, the other WTO member, adopts a regulation setting a maximum residue level, uh, what is normally called MRL, for all imported apples. Let's suppose that the Codex Alimentarius Commission, which is the international standard setting body for food safety, has set an MRL for pesticides in apples. However, it is not very clear whether the measure uh, that has been adopted by Tristat is based on the codex standard or not. The first question we would ask to ourselves is, is Tristat's regulation covered by the SPS agreement? And we have to go back to the definition of an SPS measure because the SPS agreement covers all measures whose purpose is to protect human or animal health from foodborne diseases, human health from animal or plant carried diseases, animals and plants from pests or diseases, and the territory of a country from the damages caused by pests. Therefore, uh, Tristat's regulation, uh, which requires all imported apples to reduce the amount of pesticides to the maximum residue levels, can be seen as an SPS measure, which is therefore covered by the WTO SPS agreement. The second question we would be asking to ourselves is what conditions would need to be met by Tristat's measure to be consistent with the SPS agreement? Uh, now, for Tristat's measure to be in conformity with the agreement, it will need to meet some specific conditions which are, which are set in the agreement. First, it should be applied only to the extent necessary to protect human, animal or plant life or health. So members have to ensure that SPS measures are not more trade restrictive than required to achieve their appropriate level of SPS protection, taking into account technical and economic feasibility. So an acceptable level of risk can often be achieved in alternative ways. Among the alternatives, members should select uh, the alternative that does not restrict trade more than necessary to meet their health objectives. For example, in, in the example we are mentioning, setting a maximum residue level to imported apples uh, in face of the growing amount of imported apples with high levels of pesticide residue might be a less trade restrictive alternative than imposing an import ban, for example, on apples. A second condition to be met by a measure is to be based on scientific principles and not to be maintained without sufficient evidence. 
So measures to ensure food safety and to protect the health of animals and plants should be based on the analysis of objective scientific data and assessment of the real, of the actual risk. So in the example we are mentioning, the measure would, need, would be presumed to be necessary and consistent with the SPS agreement if it is based on the relevant international standard. And in the example, it would be uh, the maximum residue level set by the Codex Alimentary Commission. Uh, if that was not the case, Tristat would need to provide scientific uh, justification. Uh, it is important to note here that WTO members are allowed to apply measures without scientific evidence only if this scientific uh, evidence is insufficient. In such cases, members can apply provisional SPS measures uh, subject to the conditions which are set in Article 5.7 of the SPS agreement. A third condition to be met is that a measure shall not arbitrarily or unjustifiably discriminate between members where identical or similar conditions prevail. Therefore, members have to ensure that their SPS measures do not arbitrarily or unjustifiably discriminate between countries where there are the, uh, similar or identical conditions, including between their own territory and the territory of other members. These measures shall not be applied in a manner which would constitute a disguised restriction on international trade. It is also true that due to differences in climate or existing pests or diseases or food safety conditions, it may not always be appropriate to impose the same SPS requirements on food or animal or plant, plant products coming from different countries. This is in fact taken into account in the SPS agreement. In addition, and to conclude, the SPS agreement also includes other requirements, very important requirements, notably transparency obligations. These are related to the notification of SPS measures, to the publication of these measures, to the setting up of an SPS notification of authority and an SPS inquiry point. Thank you very much for your attention.